Hello there. In this video, we'll illustrate how to use XLOM to create time series forecast models using two and three month moving average along with exponential smoothing. And then we'll also introduce you to error analysis to help identify which forecast model might be the best one to use. This question is based on problem 4.9 in your text where we have a company, Dell, using a particular chip in its laptops and we're provided with price information over the past 12 months. You can see on the right, I've included a chart that takes that data and puts it all nicely into one column. And then we're going to add to this table the results from each of the forecast models and requirements A, B, and D. And then below that, we've got an error summary table that I've prepared where we'll include the mean absolute deviation or MAD, mean absolute percentage error or MAPE, and mean squared error, MSE. So our first requirement A is to use a two month moving average on all the data and plot the averages. So we'll click XLOM, we will select moving average. This is a two month moving average. We've got 12 months of previous data and we want to average two periods. Hit OK, generates a spreadsheet. What we'll do now is we'll make this easy and we will copy, we'll go back here and we will copy and paste the values and that way it keeps the nice orange going on there. If we want, we can pretty that up a little bit. And as you can see, what happens is the next period or January's forecast for the price of chips is expected to be is expected to be $1.72. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna select all of the forecast values. I'll copy them and then I want to paste them into our summary table. I'll just paste the values. And then I will go on to forecast B, which is to use a three month moving average. So let's do that. And I'm going to create a separate model for this one. So we'll go XLOM, we will choose moving average again. This time this is P 4.9, 3MA, 12 months of previous data. And this time we want three periods. We'll just move it over here and we'll expand the size. And now we'll just go back to the previous model. We can do a straight copy and paste January into the table. The three month moving average gives a next period forecast of $1.70. We're going to take these forecast values, go back to our original data tab, and we will paste those values in, and we can proceed. Now, requirement C is asking which is better using mean absolute deviation. What I'm going to do is actually conduct the third forecast, and then we'll assess them all at the same time. So we'll do requirement D next, which is to compute the forecast using exponential smoothing for January, using an initial forecast for January of $1.80, and then weights at 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. So actually what I need to do here is copy a couple more cells to our table. And what I'll do is we will run the forecast using exponential smoothing. We'll call this P 4.9 Expo, 12 months of historical data. We'll run it. We'll go to our last model, copy the months, the data in specifically. Per the data, we're asked to use an initial forecast of a uh, dollar of 1.8, which is done by default. And our first alpha is 0 0.1. So this gives us the next period forecast of $1.77. I'm going to copy and paste the forecast values back into our original summary sheet. But before I proceed with forecasts using 0.3 and 0.5, what I'll do is I'll start to fill in the error analysis. So what we have here is MAD, which is mean absolute deviation. And I want to capture that from the two month moving average. So if I go to my two month moving average sheet, you see here we have MAD, MSE, and MAPE. So what I want to do is grab those answers and put them into my table. But what I should do is maybe switch these around MSE and MAPE so that they're presented in the order that they are in the results here. And so we're gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna to go to my original tab and in forecast column A, which is a two month moving average, I'm going to right click and click hit paste special. And what this does is should bring up a little menu. And what I want to do is I want to paste the values, but I also want to transpose them because I selected them in, in rows and I want to put them in as columns. And I want all of my MAPE values to be as percentages. Okay, so what does this mean? If we go back to this tab here, a two month moving average will produce a mean absolute deviation, right? Which is the average of all of the absolute deviations. And the absolute deviation is just the difference between the error and the forecast. The forecast is 1.73 and the error is the difference between the actual and the forecast. And all we do is we take an absolute value of that. So what that means for the month of March, the forecast was 1.73 and the error was minus 35. But when we do that for every single forecast, what we end up with is saying the average error is plus or minus 7.5 cents. 
When we look at the squared error, MSE, the squared error is just the square of the difference between the actual and the error. And what it does is it amplifies how far off the error is. And calculating the MSE is just the mean or the average of all of those squared errors. And then the absolute percentage error is simply the absolute error divided by the actual demand. So it tells us what percentage we're off. So for the month of March, the forecast was too high by three and a half cents or 2.06%. Or we could say the forecast was off by three and a half cents or 2.606%. If we look at the month of September, we see that the forecast was off by 11 and a half cents or 6.67%. So in total, what that means is that our forecast is off on average 4.2%. I'm gonna to go to the three month moving average now, and I'm going to copy the same results, the MAD, MSE, and MAPE. I'm gonna copy them. I'll go back to my original tab. I will paste special to bring up the list that allows me to paste the values and to transpose them from rows to columns. I should add one more thing here to this table. I'll add another row above it. Now we'll go to our exponential smoothing. We'll just go and copy and paste the MAD, MSE, and MAPE. So just show you what I'm doing here. I'm taking these three values. I'm gonna copy them, go back, paste special. We'll pop a list up, transpose values. Now, rather than do a model again, from scratch, I'm just going to go back to my exponential smoothing model and change the smoothing constant or alpha to 0.3. It'll result in some minor changes. The next period will be a $1.74 forecast or $1.737. I'm going to copy the errors, go back to my table, paste special, transpose and select values. And then one more, I'm going to back to my ex I'm going to go back to my expo model again, change the alpha to 0.5. Of course, the errors change. I'm going to grab and copy those. And then one last time, paste special, bring up my list, transpose, and put the values. Now we're in a position to discuss the error. So we have two different versions of a weighted average model, two months and three months, and three different versions of exponential smoothing ranging from 0.1 to 0.5. Again, and what the exponential smoothing constant or alpha does is put 10%, 30%, or 50% on the difference between the actual and the forecast. So when determining which forecast model is the best one, we want the one with the lowest errors. So if we look at comparing the mean absolute deviation across the board and say, what this tells us is that the average error ranges from about 6.6 .6 cents to about 8.8 .8 cents. And when we look at all of these, the lowest, so we just wanna make sure we get the lowest, we'll go equals min, the lowest is 0.66. So we're gonna highlight this one green as being the most desirable and we'll copy and paste that to help us out. And the lowest MSE is also exponential smoothing, so we'll select that one as the best. And then finally, when we look at the mean absolute percentage error, you see the errors range from 3.79% up to about 4.95%. And again, the lowest is exponential smoothing at 0.5. So what this tells us is that of the five different versions of forecasting models we tried, the best one, based on the type of data that we're given over the past year is the exponential smoothing with an alpha constant of 0.5. It results in the lowest mean absolute deviation, which basically says on average, our forecast is off by 6.6 .6 cents. The mean squared error telling us the magnitude of the errors are relatively small. And then finally, for the mean absolute percentage error, our forecast is off on average by 3.8%. As you can appreciate, no forecast model is perfect. So if you can get your forecasted price of chips to be off only by, let's say, less than 10 cents, and in this case, less than 4%, that's a pretty good model. Now, you can see what I did, actually, is I forgot to include the forecast results from the two models. So I'm going to grab the forecast data for alpha at 0.5. I'm going to paste those values in. And then I'm going to go back and change the alpha to 0.3. So here's the beauty of Excel where just by changing one simple number, we can get the results instantaneously. We'll copy, paste that, those values into our table. Now, why am I doing this? Because now what I can do is actually graph all of that data and say we've got all those months of data and the actuals and the forecasts, and we can very quickly insert, we'll see what the recommended charts are, and we like this one, we want the line graph, we know that the actual is the blue line. So what we'll do is we'll just make it look a little bit different so we can actually compare it to the rest. All we've done here is included a visual representation or graph of the forecast versus the actual. So the blue dotted line is now the actual and you can see how all of the other ones vary. And when we look at 
the different models, you can see that the green line, which is the uh, 0.5 exponential smoothing, has the least variations of the other solid lines. You'll also notice that they do vary quite a bit from the actual when you look at, let's say, April. You can see that the two-month moving average is 1.68 when the actual was 1.85. And this is because these time series forecasts always trail the actual data because they're based on some difference between actual and forecast. Using XLOM to do five different forecast models and then interpretation of the error analysis as well as a visual graph to help us determine which forecast model might be the most appropriate one to use.